Hello, Emmanuel, and welcome to DNV's uh, Spotline on Shipping Series. As many of you will know, uh, our guest today is Emmanuel Grimaldi, the President and Managing Director of Grimaldi Euromed SPA, and also the incoming Chairman of the International Chamber of Shipping. Welcome, uh, Emmanuel. Thank you, Knut. You are most welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you with us, and, and the point of today's conversation is to shed light on some of the most important topics influencing the shipping industry's decarbonization agenda, and to learn a bit more about the pathway for the Grimaldi Group. So with that, uh, let's just get on with the question. So, uh, Emmanuel, June next year, you will take over the top position of chairman at the International Chamber of Shipping, uh, one of the most influential industry associations in maritime. What are your goals for the role, please? Thank you, Knut. First of all, I would like to say that uh, uh, we had uh, uh, an excellent uh, uh, chairman, which is Esben Paulson, as you know, that is also the, the chairman of uh, the ICS. And I had the privilege of working together with him for four years as a vice president. And uh, I think that uh, the International Chamber of Shipping is doing an extraordinary work. Uh, we even went above the request of uh, the regulators and we started with some extremely interesting initiative. So I think that I will work on the footpath of my predecessor. Thank you, Emmanuel. And, uh, you know, staying with that great event that ICS just organized in, in Glasgow. Now, the COP26 climate talks recently came to an end. And as expected, the transport sector was high on the agenda. One of the most notable initiatives for, for Maritime was uh, the Clyde Bank Declaration for Green Shipping Corridors, and its signatories include some of the world's top shipping nations, which have committed to establishing the zero emission maritime uh, routes. And uh, what is your take on this, please? Shipping uh, must not be seen as guilty of uh, being uh, one of the uh, biggest polluters. I think that we have to be seen as a resource because we are transporting 90% of the goods by sea and uh, we are only having 3% uh, of pollution. Said this, of course, we have to do a lot. And uh, of course, we have to work for decarbonization. And as you know, we have even uh, uh, asked to reach as soon as possible a net zero emission in 2050. And of course, we have to run to achieve our goals. Uh, but uh, uh, then there will be several interesting initiatives, and I think all of them with a multiple approach of different strategies have to be applied in shipping in the near future, I believe. I couldn't agree more, Emmanuel. And um, if we stay on the topic of decarbonization, when the shipping industry debates the pace of decarbonization, most discussions focus on regulatory pressure as well as the supply and technical feasibility of new fuels. And it's easy to forget the crew competence, uh, which is a major su success factor in making decarbonization work on board. And uh, we also heard about the Just Maritime Transition Task Force co-created by the ICS and announced at COP26, which aims to remedy this. Could you tell us a little bit more about the aims of this task force, please? I think that it is of uh, extreme importance to consider the human element first and uh, to make sure, first of all, that any of the transitional fuels or any of the transitional technology or technology, they have to be secure and safe. We cannot put, of course, at risk and peril our uh, seafarers. 
because of new technology. So we have to work. And I know that there are uh, some uh, serious perplexity of crews before using, uh, for instance, ammonia or other uh, uh, gas, uh, unless they are uh, extremely secure. So we need some serious training before uh, implementing new technologies. I think it's it's great to hear that we put the seafarers um, say competence at the heart of this and uh, and uh, let let me stay a little bit on this uh, transition fuel because during ICS uh, future of shipping conference in Glasgow which was a great success uh, there was generally I would say great support for transition fuels such as LNG however not by everyone. And uh, one ICS representative questioned whether LNG really is a good bridging fuel to take the industry closer to net zero. And I'm curious to know what is your and not least ICS's position on this, please. As I mentioned also before, I think that uh, we need a multiple approach. And uh, I hate to see that sometimes there is a war for the ones who uh, every transitional solution will have pros and cons. And uh, of course, if we look in detail, in any case, they are better than the actual situation. So, of course, uh, we have to encourage all the owners who are going for this new technology. And some of this new technology, they will evolve even further. It is true, and of course I can understand that uh, we have also heard that uh, John Biden and uh, uh, even our president of the commission were uh, mentioning that of course uh, one third of the uh, uh, anthropogenic emissions are to be referred to uh, methanol. But say this, uh, uh, of course, there are people who are fighting, for instance, scrubbers, but scrubbers could have an evolution. Uh, the, the scrubber of the future, first of all, they are not dumping sulfur into the water because, as you know, the combination of uh, sulfur together with uh, uh, sodium and salt produce uh, something else, which is uh, not uh, uh, polluting. But said this, there are new technology. For instance, through perhaps a scrubber, you can catch uh, uh, some of the CO2 which you are emitting, or you can use all the water that you are uh, uh, putting, that you are recycling on board of the ship with uh, taking, for instance, microplastics out of the water, or perhaps heavy metals. So we can contribute not only not to uh, pollute the environment, but perhaps to, to, to clean the environment from pollution which was made before and by even third parties. Excellent. Yes. And, uh, to keep all, say, options open and explore every avenue uh, for improvement makes a lot of sense for not only the shipping world, but the, the entire world. And uh, if I could come back to you as uh, as a ship owner and uh, say a, a leader of a long-standing family business, how do you in in your company navigate this complex environment? And and what are your strategies for making the Grimaldi Group fit for a decarbonized uh, future? Please, uh, Knut. First of all, I think we have to say that the solution is not available. We do not have a solution. I think we have to say that, to be honest, because a, a, a large ship for the long haul, she cannot go on electricity. Uh, even if we can produce clean ammonia, there is no logistics about uh, clean ammonia. And the clean ammonia, the green ammonia is not produced. Actually, the 99.9% .9 of the ammonia that is produced is high polluting when it's produced. So we have to look at the black tail of hydrogen, of uh, uh, ammonia and so on. Said this, of course we can do and we have to look and we have to start making research because um, uh, perhaps even the ammonia can be 
to put together with gas oil or put together with uh, uh, liquefied gas or with other solutions. And we have to look at the, all the possible uh, solutions and make research uh, in this field. We are doing at company level. I understand that the ICS want to start a fund to do it at uh, a global level. And I think that is extremely important. But said this, perhaps during these years of transition, we have to look at the energies that we are consuming. And we at Grimaldi have made fantastic improvement in reducing the energy necessary to move the ships and the people and the cargo through the world. And that with outstanding result. In many cases, over we are moving cargo, trailers and containers with less than 50% of, and every vessel that, uh, that we are building nowadays has to have a, a footprint that is less than 50% of the previous vessel. And we are reaching this target through research and development and with the assistance of uh, the best uh, uh, naval architect. I think it's very encouraging to hear that you are making such good progress, that you are investing in R&D. And I think this is really what we talk about when we, we talk about the maritime renaissance, that we can challenge the status quo and look for improvements in energy efficiency and better solutions. And it's very inspiring to hear that you are producing such good results. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you very much, Emmanuel, for taking time out to share your experience, your insights with us. And um, I, for one, certainly look forward to the continued leadership of ICS uh, and uh, your uh, chairmanship from June next year. So thank you very much for joining us today, Emmanuel. Knut, thank you. It was a great uh, pleasure to speak to you and uh, to learn also uh, what is happening today. Thank you.